going to change a lot after Mike Yurcich was hired as the new offensive coordinator because Yurcich has his own type of quarterback he's going to look for as opposed to what Kirk Scirocco was looking for. Plus, Yurcich is a guy who has a great reputation re, – uh, yeah, reputation, excuse me – reputation with being able to coach quarterbacks. You know, you look what he did with guys like Mason Rudolph. Sam Ellinger had a better year this year under him than he had in the past. He was Justin Fields' quarterback coach for a year at Ohio State. You know, Yurcich is known as a good quarterback coach and a good offensive mind. Um, he's been giving out a lot of offers since he arrived at Penn State. I think two guys to watch most are probably Drew Alar out of Ohio and Nick Evers out of Texas. Obviously, Evers and Yurcich had a connection when he was at Texas. Alar is a quarterback who looks ready to just absolutely explode. I mean, you watch his film and the ball just pops out of his hand with ease. Um I'm amazed that he's not rated higher. I know I read on 24-7 Sports a day or two ago that they said that whenever the new rankings come out, they expect him to get a big boost. So I think Alar is definitely a guy for Penn State fans to watch, especially because he's in the region in Ohio, and Ohio State already has a quarterback in their class in Quinn Ewers, and Ohio State's quarterback room is already extremely crowded. So I have a hard time believing they're going to take two quarterbacks. So I don't think that Ohio State offer is going to come for Alar unless Ewers opens things back up. So that will definitely work in Penn State's favor. And as for Nick Evers out of Texas, um, I know reading some things with him, both he and his family like your such a lot. So I would not be surprised if we see either Drew Alar or Nick Evers end up in this class. Talking uh, Penn State football with Marty Leap from uh, Black Shoe Diaries on SB Nation. And, um, you know, James Franklin has turned this into the uh, second best recruiting power in the Big Ten. Um but a bit of a drop off here in 21, sixth rated in the Big Ten, number 21 in the 247 rankings. Uh, do you think there was any particular reason why the class dropped off? Was that just total numbers, the four game, the five game losing streak at the beginning of the year? Anything involved there that you can point to? Uh, the total numbers were definitely a big part of it. They only signed. Uh, I want to say, I believe 16 kids. Let me do, yeah, 16 kids. Now, their average class ranking was 8907. The previous year it was 895. And the previous year, I think their class was like 11th or 12th in the country. So it was definitely a numbers thing. Um, surprisingly, that four game or five game losing streak didn't really hurt them because they, they withstood, they kept everybody on board through that. So I think that a lot of that just goes to show that they did a very good job of not just recruiting this class, but getting this class to be tight knit. There's definitely some good players in that class, you know? So I, I think that the biggest drop off, like I said, stemmed largely from the numbers because they only had 16 commits. You had four or five kids to that. You get your usual 20, 21 commits. You're probably in the top 15 again. So obviously the seven enrollees already on campus have a bit of a jump here. They, they're going through individual workouts, uh, their strength and conditioning right now. They go to spring practice uh, and get the jump on everybody else that's going to join in the oh, summer. Anybody in particular out of the early enrollees that you're excited about? Yeah, I think, in my opinion, the two best players they signed in this class were offense lineman Landon Tangwall and cornerback Kalen King, both of whom are early enrollees. Um, King was a guy I definitely expected to play early. Now, Tariq Castro-Fields announced he's going to come back for his fifth season, and John Dixon was added in the transfer portal, who was a starter at South Carolina. Two things they probably didn't really expect. So that might cut into King's early playing time as a true freshman. As for Tangwall, I still think it's a possibility we see him on the field. I know that's rare for offensive linemen, but, you know, there's going to be positions to be had on the offensive line. They brought in a grad transfer in Eric Wilson from Harvard who will play a role, but I think that's going to be more of a depth role. So I do think we could see both Tangwall and King on the field from the early enrollees. Some of the other early enrollees, I mean, a lot of it is guys who may not necessarily – make an early impact, but you look at Christian Bayou, the quarterback in the class, you always want to get the quarterback on campus as soon as possible. Rodney McGraw, who's a defensive end, who has a very high ceiling, but is a bit of a project. Again, those project guys, you want to get them on campus as soon as possible. Start molding them in your strength and conditioning program. Same with offensive lineman Nate Bruce, who I know the staff absolutely loves out of Harrisburg High School who Bruce is probably two to three years away. But if you take a guy who the staff, well, they love his motor and just his constant go when he's on the field, you get that kind of guy into your strength program as soon as possible. You can be looking at a very good offensive lineman sooner rather than later. Marty Lee, Black Sheep Diaries. Uh, join him and the rest of the crew uh, over there on SP Nation covering Penn State Athletics. Uh, Marty, we always appreciate you dropping the knowledge for us. 
Anytime, Mark. I always appreciate it. It's always a good time. Good stuff, man. I appreciate yep. it.